Hello, my name is Mark Richards and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. Today, we're going to take a look at enterprise architecture and see why some enterprise architecture efforts unfortunately fail. Uh, before launching into this lesson, I did want to actually show you um, where all these lessons are located. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions about is there a catalog of all of these in chronological order and as a matter of fact there is on my website developer2architect.com under the lessons link has every single lesson I've done. As a matter of fact I stopped it here on lesson 72 just because it get a little dizzy um, but you can go to developer2architect.com slash lessons to see every single lesson that I've recorded. Now, a lot of the lessons, as a matter of fact, most of the material for Software Architecture Monday comes from these two books that I wrote uh, with Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture back in 2020 and Software Architecture, The Hard Parts, written in 2021. So let's talk about enterprise architecture and unfortunately why over a third of enterprise architecture efforts fail or end up becoming abandoned. So we saw in lesson 49 titled What is Enterprise Architecture? that enterprise architecture really is that bridge. It's the glue between the business strategy and operating model, how the business runs, and IT operations and the IT systems and infrastructure, all those capabilities. And it really is the glue that aligns those two from a planning and design standpoint. However, many enterprise architecture efforts that are started within companies unfortunately do end up failing or being abandoned. And let's investigate why. So here we have our enterprise architects. Now enterprise architects have to collaborate and interface with a lot of different kinds of roles in the company, one of those being the business stakeholders. Business stakeholders understand the business, what needs to be done, and conveys all of those changes and business initiatives to the enterprise architects. Oh, for example, we need to fully automate the order entry process. Now that information gets conveyed to the enterprise architects, which then build roadmaps to determine what needs to be done to satisfy or implement that particular business initiative. And those roadmap elements become projects which then get sent to application architects who understand all the details of what really needs to be done in those particular systems. Well, this is a very traditional model of where enterprise architects fit within the organization. However, Unfortunately, as you notice from those unidirectional lines, there's also silos that exist between these various groups within most organizations. And this is where the problems occur. And this is one of the reasons why enterprise architecture efforts fail. You see, application architects complain that enterprise architects leave out too many details and they're really not sure exactly what needs to be done. As a matter of fact, the business stakeholders complain that enterprise architects really don't know enough about the business and don't seem to fully understand and grasp what we're trying to accomplish. And these are real problems that exist because of these silos. One of the techniques and ways of actually getting enterprise architecture efforts working is to break apart, break down these silos, forming bi-directional collaborative communication so that effectively enterprise architects become part of the virtual teams within business stakeholders, such as a business sponsor, business analysts, product owners, and also the application architects, so that those two real scenarios about not providing enough detail and also not understanding enough about the business, those two goals are reached. Now, this is one reason why enterprise architect architecture efforts fail, but the primary reason, at least that I have seen and experienced, is all about communication. And what I'd like to do is show you some of the warning signs first, of when you know 
that your enterprise architecture efforts or enterprise architecture team is probably not going to last long in the company. But then I want to show you effective communication techniques to overcome these pitfalls and warning signs. Let's take a look at the warning signs first. These are all things that you can observe to realize, you know, we might not be as effective as we can be. And this might fail. And the first of those warning signs is that business stakeholders who we need to, as an enterprise architect, continually collaborate with, stop listening to enterprise architecture teams or don't really seem to care much. They're in your way kind of piece. And this is the first warning sign to look for. Uh, the second one is that your enterprise architecture team and corresponding team members are seen really as support staff and they start getting assigned to different projects, tactical rather than strategic initiatives. This is another warning sign that hmm, we're really just seen as additional staff as opposed to a cohesive team to implement business initiatives. Uh, the third warning sign is that your enterprise architecture team doesn't have access to business stakeholders. This is usually um, one of the many first questions uh, that I do ask in any, any enterprise architecture effort that I'm involved in is, do I have access to key stakeholders and the right stakeholders? There's a lot of organizations and that put walls or roadblocks against who enterprise architect enterprise architects can and can't talk to. This is one of the warning signs that I don't think this effort's really going to work out that well. <laughs> Another uh, warning sign is that your enterprise architecture team is constantly asked to explain what you do. Why are you here? This is a key warning sign that I'm going to show you in a little bit how to actually overcome this particular piece. Um, but kind of related to that warning sign is that the value of your enterprise architecture team and those corresponding efforts are constantly being questioned. Every time budget cuts come up, it always seems to be the enterprise architecture team that starts to be targeted. And this is not the fault of the business stakeholders. This is the fault of enterprise architects not appropriately communicating the value. And I want to show you how to do that after we look at the warning signs. Another warning sign is that your EA team is unaware of basically some strategic business decisions that are being made, a uh, business direction, uh, maybe a major merger or acquisition is happening and the enterprise architecture team is completely unaware of that merger or acquisition. Uh, maybe it's a change in direction of the company. This is again, not a fault of the business stakeholders not communicating. This is a direct fault of that unidirectional line I showed you earlier and breaking down those silos that exist so that we have a bi-directional collaborative communication, being on the same virtual team and aware of those strategic business decisions. And finally, the last warning sign is that all of the artifacts that you produce as an enterprise architect and spend so much time on are largely ignored and basically become shelfware. No one really knows about them or really cares about them. If any of these warning signs exist for you, there's a chance your enterprise architecture effort will be abandoned or, or fail. Let me show you some communication techniques to basically mitigate all of this risk and make enterprise architecture efforts work. And let's take a look at those communication techniques. Uh, the first one is basically make it personal. People are busy. And in general, people are only interested in what's directly relevant to them. This is one of the mistakes a lot of enterprise architects make is to insist to invite all stakeholders, regardless of their involvement to a particular meeting or communicate with all stakeholders. This is why a lot of business stakeholders and application architects start ignoring enterprise architects. Make it personal, make it relevant target specific stakeholders for whatever initiative or question or whatever you want to present and make sure that uh, folks that 
don't need to know you're not wasting their time. Another communication technique is to maintain a constant presence. Walk around, be seen, don't hang in your office or, or cubicle or workstation all day. Um, now I know that again, in, in our pandemic times, this is not as easy to do, obviously. Um, but when we are able to start working in person again, walk around, talk to people, be seen, uh, be known. This is one way to help facilitate uh, that communication with all the different kinds of stakeholders that an enterprise architect needs to communicate with. You know, another one is to keep things simple, straightforward, and concise. Uh, enterprise architecture is hard and it's pretty complicated. And a lot of the roadmaps that we create as enterprise architects, a lot of the modeling that we do um, becomes quite overwhelming. Um, one of the techniques to get people to pay attention and listen is to simplify things. Drill down into the nitty gritty details only when it's necessary or needed. Now, one of my favorite techniques, uh, and this is one I usually coach other enterprise architects on, is to leverage metrics to communicate your value across the organization. In a prior lesson, I talked about DDD, not, uh, not domain-driven design, but demonstration defeats discussion. And leveraging KPIs, key performance indicators, or various metrics contextual to the initiative you're working on is one really great way of being able to indicate your value to the organization. Um, for example, we want to be the number one online insurance provider in the nation. Well, what are you now? We're 10th. We want to be number one. After a lot of effort, we can actually generate metrics to say, now we're eight, now we're number six, and show that progress of the value uh, that you're bringing to the organization in those specific business initiatives. Now, kind of similar or following on to that is to frequently communicate accomplishments and progress, leveraging those metrics. However, here's a cautionary tale, everyone. Frequently communicate those, but don't over communicate. This is another reason why people stop listening to enterprise architects, because we over communicate some of our accomplishments, issues, or progress. But focus your communications, especially to a broad audience, on things that are really significant. Major milestones is a really good way. Uh, a major hurdle that most people are familiar with that you overcome. Uh, maybe it's a certain benchmark that you're trying to reach uh, within some sort of business initiative. And finally, the last one is enterprise architecture is hard. And it's difficult to convey a lot of these complex roadmaps and models that we produce. And so my, I would encourage you to utilize and leverage multimodal communication when you're presenting ideas, accomplishments, milestones. Presentation skills, for example, uh, animations in a slideshow combined with some documentation. Uh, these are effective multimodal ways. The documentation is for somebody who wants to read a little more detail about uh, the solution or your idea or the roadmap. But in a presentation, be concise. Make it straightforward and simple to convey your ideas. Uh, leveraging some of these communication techniques really helps overcome some of those warning signs and actually can make enterprise architecture efforts work. So this has been lesson 119, why enterprise architecture efforts fail and how to actually make them work. So stay tuned in two more weeks for another lesson in some aspect of software architecture. Thanks for listening.